start recording now. <clears throat> So in the previous classes, we already discussed about the millennial reign of Jesus with his saints for thousand years, okay? And we have seen that the white throne of, I mean, white throne judgment of Jesus in chapter 20, okay? That means it is very clearly written in chapter 20, verse six, that we will be the priest of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. So that thousand years of reign of Jesus Christ is known as the millennial kingdom or millennial rule on the earth, on the earth. Okay, but today we are going to study from the chapter 21 and 22. We may not be able to cover chapter 22 today, but we will try to cover uh, at least a portion of chapter 21 today. Okay, anyway, and you know, we are going to mainly focus on the uh, new heaven and a new earth and also a new Jerusalem and the river of life, the river of life in uh, chapter 22, okay? The new heaven, new earth and new Jerusalem is in chapter 21. So we know that these chapters gives us a clear description of eternal heaven, the eternal heaven is the state that we are going to be in for for etern for for spending the eternity. Okay, so Apostle John describes his vision about heaven. So in this portion, especially uh, uh, cha uh, chapter twenty one verses one to five, Apostle John is trying to describe about his vision about the heaven. That means he received this vision while he was alive. He received this vision while he was alive and he was living in the island of Patmos that we know that and he was not dead or raised from the dead so that's a re that that was the time that he was receiving this vision about the heaven so we cannot ignore those people uh, who who say that they saw the vision of heaven while alive or in a situation that they died and raised from the dead you know some used to say that uh, while i was in a uh, ventilator or a doctor confirmed that I died, but I was gone to heaven uh, and the angel took me to, to different areas of heaven and explained many things. And I was so amazed and excited to see all those things. Okay, so that is their personal experience. Now we cannot question them. You can, you can believe it or not, it's up to you. But we must believe what is written about the heaven in Bible. Okay. So they may have seen the visions about the heaven or after the death, during the time that before the, before the resurrection or before the raising from the dead, they might have seen something in heaven. No, they might have received that vision. We cannot, we cannot say that they didn't receive that vision. They might have received. That is their personal experience. You know, that doesn't mean that all the other people, all the people, those who are raised from the dead, they have to see the vision. No, no, no. It is not going to happen. At the same time, as Jason said, you know, there are many people have claiming that they have said, okay, uh, we have seen many things about the, uh, about the heaven in my vision or something, uh, okay, like that. You know, we, we can believe that or we cannot believe that because you know, there are something to be matched with the, the, the biblical doctrines or biblical uh, things that, uh, I mean, which is written in the Bible. So all these new things, you know, especially, in chapter 21, verse uh, uh, 1 and uh, uh, 9 uh, and 10, we understand there are many new things are coming. So all these new things indicate the incredible experiences that we are going to experience in, in, in eternity, in eternity. Okay. At the same time, you know, what, what are the new things there? The new heaven is there. The new earth is there. And new Jerusalem is there. And all these things are the experiences that we are going to experience in eternity okay and also we we know that there will be a river of life also in chapter 22 we will study that maybe afterwards okay so one more thing that i have to uh tell you is the fellowship and the communion and the and the living together experience with god which was lost in the garden of eden after the fall of man will be re-established will be re-established 
during the time of eternity, which is proved by Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 5. It is very clear that we know that the fellowship and the communion that I mean, Adam and Eve were having in the Garden of Eden, you no, know, they were living together. That was the experience. You know, they were living together. When God comes down from heaven and living together, walking with them. You now that fellowship, they lost that fellowship at that garden after the fall. But that will be re-established during the time of eternity. So that's that is very clearly written in chapter 21, verses 1 to 5. Now, let me ask you one question. Have you ever thought of the experience where, where I mean, each moment of our life spending with the Lord and living with God forever and ever? Have you ever thought of that experience? No, every moment of our life spending with God, spending with the Lord, living with God forever and ever. No, we know that in the beginning, we see God comes down to the Garden of Eden and walking and talking with the man, and they experienced the physical presence of God, right? They experienced the physical presence of God. But after the fall, they lost that presence. They lost that presence. You know, afterwards, we understand nobody was able to experience his physical presence in a fuller way. Okay? So partially, somebody is claiming that, okay, we saw God and we had an experience, maybe as Elsa said, when we are praying, when we are praying, or when we are, I mean, filled with the Holy Spirit and we are, I mean, receiving some visions. No, we are receiving that and we know that we are uh, connecting with God and we are speaking to God. Okay, so that experience is not there in, in many of our lives. Okay, but we can understand that nobody was able to experience his physical presence in fuller way. We know that Moses experienced that presence. And also we see that uh, uh, the presence of God as the Shekinah glory, the Shekinah glory. And also we can see that men at the, at the most holy place and some other places also, the presence of God was presented. Okay? But in eternity or in heaven, God himself will be with us always. At every moment, God himself will be with us physically. You know? We know that uh, when Jesus Christ took um, the, the, the form of man, he came down, to he came down to the earth. We understand that Jesus Christ was here for 33 and a half years. At the same time, he was just like a man on this earth. On this earth, he was just like a man. He took the form of a man. But at the same time, after that, and before that also, in the Old Testament period also, we understand that nobody was experiencing the physical presence of God in a fuller way. Partially they were experiencing or they saw that the presence of God is there and we are going to that place. Even Moses also went to that place to see the presence of God, to experience the presence of God. They can do that. At the same time, the physical presence of God will be experienced with us in eternity or in heaven. That will be a joyful situation that we are in heaven with God, with God in physical situation. Okay, So how can we say that? How can we say that it is going to be a joyful situation? Because it is very clearly mentioned in chapter 21 and 22. Yeah? That, we, that we, we will study about uh, I mean, uh, that as we move on. Okay, But before that, let us, let us see how the perfect completion of Genesis is seen in, in Revelation. You know, the, there are many things which is written in Genesis. I mean, you know, there are many things which is beginning in, in book of Genesis and it is completed in the book of Revelation. Okay. Uh, there, there is a comparison between Genesis and Revelation. That means something which is related to the creation of God in Genesis and a comparison with Revelation chapter 21 and 22. Okay. You are getting a, a screen sharing now about the perfect completion of Genesis in Revelation. Okay, we will just go through that. I'm not going to explain all those things, but you can just take it down the points only, the points and the references only. You know, I'm trying to uh, give you that uh, idea about the perfect completion of Genesis in Revelation. That means a comparison between Genesis and Revelation or something which is related to the creation of God in Genesis and a comparison with Revelation chapter 21 and 22. 
in Genesis, heavens and earth was created. Chapter 1, verse 1. But in Revelation, we see in 21, verse 1, new heavens and new earth is coming. Again, sun created in Genesis, but in Revelation it is written, there is no need of the sun because Jesus himself will be the sun and Jesus himself will be the light for all those who are dwelling in heaven. Again, in Genesis, the night was established. The night was established by God, but in heaven or in Revelation, it is written, there is no night there. In chapter 22, verse 5, there is no night there. Okay. So, again, the sea created in book of Genesis. The sea, seas were created in book of Genesis, but there is no more seas in book of Revelation or in heaven. That is what it, it is written. There is no longer any sea in chapter 21, verse 1. Again, the curse announced in Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 to 17, but the book of Revelation says there is no more curse. There is no more curse in 22, verse 3. Again, in Genesis, death enters history. Okay, That means till that day, till that day there was no death. But in Genesis, we see in three chapter 3, verse 19, the entrance of the death into the history of man. But in Revelation 21, verse 4, it is written, there is no more death. There is no more death. Somebody said here, I think, uh, um, yes, Pradeep said uh, there is no sin or someone else. There is no sin or there is no death in heaven. That's true. That death enters in, in the history in Genesis, but in Revelation in heaven, there is no more death. Again, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, man was driven out from the Garden of Eden. Man was driven out from the Garden of Eden. But in Revelation, we read, chapter 22, verse 14, we read, man was restored to the paradise. And again, the last point. There are many things, but we were just I mean, connecting maybe Genesis chapter I mean, uh, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3, and Revelation chapter 21 and 22. One verse from 22. Okay, sorrow and pain begin in book of Genesis, but there is no more tears or pain or sorrow in the book of Revelation or in heaven, in heaven. Okay, so there is no more tears or pain in heaven. So these are the, these are the main points that you can make a comparison between the book of Genesis and Revelation and the beginning, I mean, uh, verses or the creation things in the Genesis and the last final chapters of the book of Revelation. Just for your understanding, I have given you, but we are going to study from the new heaven and the new earth, the new heaven and the new earth from Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. Yes, Elsa, you can read uh, chapter 21, verse 1 once. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. Okay. So John says that in, in, in this particular verse, John says, he saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. To understand the meaning of this passing away of the first heaven and the first earth. We know that the first heaven and the first earth means which was the heaven and the and the earth. Which, you know, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we read, in the beginning God created heavens and the earth. Okay, that's the same thing that we are calling here. You know, Apostle John is calling here as the first heaven and the first earth. Okay, so in order to understand the meaning of passing away of the first heaven and the earth, we should know a little bit about the Jewish traditional belief. The Jewish traditional belief is different about I mean, many things, okay? But, um, uh, you know, by the way, we know that how many of you know that uh, the Jewish Jewish Bible, I mean, uh, how many how many books are there in the Jewish Bible? How many of you know that? 
How five many books? books are there? Five books? No. How many books are there in the Jewish Bible? You know that you, you, the Jewish people, the Jewish people, they have a Bible. You know it, no? Yeah. So how many, how many books are there? For the sake of the time or saving time, let me give you the answer. There are 24. There are 24 books in the Jewish Bible. Okay. So those 24 books are divided into three divisions. Okay, into three divisions. I'll, I'll give you some of one, one, I mean, yeah. You're getting a, 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 a order of that post of those books. I know there is no need to, if you are writing down, it will take time. Okay, just, I mean, if you have a, I mean, a mobile phone, take a screenshot because there is no time to write down all those things. I mean, and uh, if you're using, if you're using a device, you can take uh, uh, a screenshot of that uh, thing. There's no time. To, anyway, let, let me let me come to that point. You know that is not our uh, subject. You know, there are 24 books in 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 Jewish Bible, and that is divided into three di divisions. Okay, so that three divisions are law, prophets, and writings. Okay, the law Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and that also is known as the Pentateuch. Pentateuch. Okay, that portion and the prophets. Okay, Joshua, Judges. First Samuel and Second Samuel, First Kings and Second Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the twelve minor prophets. Okay, the, the the twelve minor prophets are included in that prophetical, I mean, portion. Okay, the twelve, I mean, uh, uh, this one from Hosea to Malachi, from Hosea to Malachi, that also is there. At the same time, writings are there. In writings, okay, Psalms, Job, Proverbs, Ruth, Song of Songs, Ecclesiastes. Lamentations, Esther, Daniel, Esther, and Nehemiah. Esther, and Nehemiah, uh, both of them are. I mean, uh, comes as a comes as a one book, okay. And first and second Chronicles as a one book. In that way, twenty four books are there. Okay, we are we are coming back to the point. Okay, that is not our subject. I was just giving you an idea about the Jewish Bible. Okay, no, so no. In 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 this particular portion, we read that there is a John is getting a vision about the new heaven and a new year. So according to the traditional belief of uh, the Jewish people in uh, Isaiah chapter 65 verse 17, there is something written, okay? Isaiah chapter 65 verse, verse 17, that they believed according to that verse that God said, I create new heavens and a new earth and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. Okay. So Isaiah chapter 65 verse 17 says that God said, I create new heavens and a new earth and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. So they believed God will transform the earth to the eternity. God will transform the present earth to the eternity. And they believed there will be a renewal of present creations, which is also mentioned in the apocryphal books apocryphal books okay so they had a belief that god is going to transform the situation of the earth into an eternal situation and they believe there will be a renewal of present creations including the heaven and the earth and all the creations god is going to change all those things god is going to transform all those things and god is going to renew everything and all those things even these things are I um, mean, mentioned in a in a part in a in a partial way in the apocryphal books. Okay, how many of you know that? What is the apocryph apocryphal books? How many books are there for ap apocryphal books? Or what is that? Apocryphal books means. I think it's like the account of what the apostles did, um, and what they believed or saw the culture and everything around that. Yes. Okay. So is that in is that books are included in our Bible? No. No. So you know how many books are there? Uh, how many extra books are there uh, uh, for for the? This is actually the apocryphal books are included in the Catholic Bible. Okay. Catholic Bible. Okay. That means seven books are known as the extra seven books are known as the apocryphal books. Okay. So that means. In the Catholic Bible, there are 73 books. We have 66 books, right? The Protestant Bible, we have 66 books in the 
Bible, but they have seven books extra. That is total 73 books in the Catholic Bible. Okay, so leave it uh, now here. You know, we will study those things some other day if you want to study about that, about the apocryphal books and uh, why those books are not included in the Protestant Bible extra. Okay, so we will study that maybe later. So let us come back to Revelation chapter 21. Now, when, when we think about the Jewish belief and uh, their traditional belief about the new heaven and new earth, we understand Jewish people, they believe the Messiah would establish his kingdom in Jerusalem. Okay? So they were believing, okay, Messiah, one day Messiah will be coming as a political leader. That's the reason when Jesus came to this world, they did not accept him, right? They did not accept him. And they said, Oh, no, no, this Jesus is, is, is not a political leader. He is not a king. So we cannot accept him. So they were expecting Messiah to come forward and as a political leader, as a king, to lead all these people because they, the, the people of Israel were, um, uh, what is that, um, uh, dispersed to, to many places. So they were expecting that Messiah. And they, they believed that the Messiah would establish his kingdom in Jerusalem itself. And in the millennial kingdom, the present earth and the present visible heaven will pass away and God will create a new heaven and a new earth. Okay, So here in, 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 in Revelation chapter 21 verse 1, we read that about a new heaven and a new earth will be coming. And even in Isaiah chapter 65 verse 17 also we read, God will create a new heaven and a new earth. So everywhere is, it is written, new heaven is coming, new earth is coming, all those things. Okay, so what is the meaning of that? We are going, going into that portion. You know, the Hebrew word used for to create is bara. Okay, bara is the Hebrew word <clears throat> which is used for to create, to create. Okay, and that means creating out of nothing. Bara in Hebrew meaning is creating out of nothing. The same word bara is used in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 also. We know that verse, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. Okay, so God created. So creation, so to create, huh? the bara is the Hebrew word used there. In here, in, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, and also in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. That means creating something out of nothing, something out of nothing. Okay, and also the Greek word, which is used here for new, for new is kaino, kainos. Yeah, kainos is the Greek word which is used for new. And the meaning of kainos is fresh, brand new, new in quality and character. This is the meaning of kainos. Okay, so why we are making or why we are taking those Hebrew word and the Greek word to understand what is going to happen for the present earth and present heaven. So to create something out of nothing, the current earth or heaven must be destroyed or vanished away, right? No, in order to create something out of nothing or in order to create a new earth or new heaven, I mean, there should happen something else. Yeah? What should happen? The, the present heaven or present earth must be destroyed or vanished away. Then the new heaven and the new earth will be established. So this will happen at the end of millennial kingdom or right after the, after the, uh, or right before the eternity. Okay. So when this is going to happen, when this is going to happen, now it is very clearly written in many places, in many places, even in second Peter also, it is written that this is going to happen someday. At the same time in book of revelation, it says that this is going to happen or vanishment of the new, uh, sorry, uh, the, the present year or destruction of the earth is going to happen at the end of the millennial kingdom or at the right before the eternity. So think about what would happen to the present earth when God creates a new earth. Okay, think about that. What would happen to the present earth when God creates a new earth? And when this is going to happen, when this is going to happen, let us get the answer for that. That is in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. Yes, Elsa, you can read that question. For, 
for they were deliberately overlooked this fact that the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God. And that by means of this, of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water, with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire and being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Okay. So here we see that by God's word, the heavens came into being, right? So, uh, uh, Second Peter chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. So it is very clearly written there that by God's word, the heavens came into being. Heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. The earth was formed out of water and by water. And by these waters, the world of that time was destroyed. Okay, If you are reading that uh, particular verses um, very thoroughly, you will understand what is the meaning of that. It is written, by these waters, also the world of that time, the world of that time means the earth. Okay? The world means the earth was destroyed. And you know, when, when somebody is reading this verse, I mean, I used to hear that somebody was saying that uh, uh, they are thinking that about the flood and the destruction of Noah's time is written here. Okay, the time of when when in the in the Noah's time the flood happened and the destructions happened and uh, I mean uh, this verse also it is very clearly written that the Noah's uh, flood and everything. But we know that during that flood, during the during the time of the flood of Noah, the earth was not removed, right? The earth was not removed or it was not fully destroyed, but the wicked dwellers were destroyed, right? The wicked people, uh, those who were dwelling on the earth, they were destroyed. The earth was not fully destroyed during the time of the flood of Noah. So we can assume that this destruction or which is mentioned in the second Peter chapter three had happened when the angels rebelled against God and became fallen angels. Okay. There will be many questions or many confusions about these things, but even we understand from the, from the biblical view that we can understand that, you know, that happened, that happened, that flood or that, uh, what is that, uh, uh, that the destruction of the earth had happened when the angels rebelled against God and became fallen angels. For example, Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Okay. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, we read that the earth was formless. And void, right? Bhumi Pairam Shunyam Ayirunu. Okay, Bhumi Pairam Shunyam Ayirunu. The earth was formless and void, which is to be actually translated as the earth became formless and void. Okay, so it is clearly written that the earth was formless and void, but we can translate it according to the Hebrew language. The scholars are saying it is not the earth was formless and void but it should be translated as the earth became formless and void. That means the earth became formless and void even before the creation of Adam and Eve. There was an incident like that. No, it's the, the meaning of that is the earth became formless and void even before the creation of Adam and Eve. That means during the time of the fallen angels. Okay? There, is a, there is a group of um, uh, angels in, I mean, uh, on the leadership of Lucifer, they were rebelling against God and they came down from heaven to the earth. So, so that happened even before the creation of Adam and Eve. So they believe that. So when we think in this way, that we understand the Bible history tells about two worldwide destructions of the earth, right? Two worldwide destructions of the earth had happened. The first thing is during the time of the fallen angels, and the second thing is the flood in the time of Noah. Okay, During the time of the fallen angels. And the second one is the flood in the time of Noah. But in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 7. Okay, In 2, uh, 2 Peter uh, uh, chapter uh, 3 verse 7. You know, it is very clearly written. By the same word, the present heavens and the earth are reserved for fire. Being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly, which shows the upcoming of event 
of the destruction or vanishment or removal of present earth and heaven by fire would happen at the end of millennial reign and which is mentioned in revelation chapter 20 you know so in second peter chapter 3 verse 7 peter apostle peter says that by the same word the present heaven and the earth are reserved for fire okay reserved okay the present earth and the present heaven is reserved for fire okay and being kept for the day of judgment okay there is a judgment coming on the earth also and there is a destruction coming on the ungodly people that shows the upcoming event of destruction or vanishment or removal of the present earth and heaven by fire would happen at the end of millennial reign. You know, when you go to Revelation chapter 20, verses 9, 10, and 11, let's read that verse, those verses. Revelation chapter 20, verses 9, 10, and 11. And they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints in the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and him who, who was seated on it. From his, presence, from his presence, earth and sky fled away and no place was found for them. Thank you. Okay, Elsa. So, you know, we have seen there, already we studied about the chapter 20, that this is going to happen. You know, when, uh, even before the judgment of the wicked people, you know, this is going to happen. Something is going to happen very hardly, very seriously, severely, that some punishment is coming on the earth. And this thing will be happening there. Okay, the earth and the heaven will be vanished away. That means there will be a destruction on the earth during those days. You know, now, now, as we are concluding our class of today, let us let us turn our attention to uh, uh, to Second Peter chapter three, uh, verses ten to thirteen. You, there, you will get uh, some of the ideas about what is going to happen for the present year. Okay, so chapter three, uh, second Second Peter chapter three, verses ten to thirteen. Yeah. Yes, Elsa, you ready? <coughs> Second Peter chapter three, verses 10 to 13. Yes. Okay. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief and then the heavens will pass away with the roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done in it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of the people ought to be in, in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for the waiting for and hastening the, the coming day of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heaven heavenly bodies will be, will melt as they burn. But according to His promise, we are waiting for the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. Okay, so listen, you know, in that, in there are there are two, yeah, three verses are there, but I have, uh, I mean, underlined some of the portions there. Okay, listen to that. I've been screen sharing. I have underlined some of the portions there. Okay, so that 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 is like this. There is a day when the heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. Okay. The elements of the earth will be destroyed by fire and the earth and its work will be burned up. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought to you be? You are to live in holy and godliness as you look forward to the day of God which will happen quickly, that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat, but in keeping with his promises, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. And this is the expectation, future expectation of the believers today. And what is, our, I, mean, I mean, future expectation? We have a future expectation that is, the last sentence, no, we are keeping with his promises. We have the promises of God and we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. But at the same time, before creating the new heaven and the new earth, there will be a destructions on 
this earth. There will be a destruction on this earth. That is known as the, there is a day when the heavens will disappear with a roar. The heavens will know about that uh, statement. The heavens will disappear. We will study maybe in the next class. Okay. That is another portion. Okay. So the heavens will disappear in one day with a, with a roar and the elements will be destroyed by fire. That means whatever we make on this earth, you know, the buildings or all the structures and everything which is made out on, on this earth will be destroyed with fire with fire and the earth and its work will be burned up okay burned up since everything will be destroyed in this way the question is what kind of people ought you to be okay malayalathil kodichirikkunnathu engeyana anagasham kodi mulakkathode olinju pogum mole padarthangal katti alikkum bhoomi odalla panigalum endu pogum cheyum ingane ive okkeyum aliyuvanulla aayirikkal aagasham chutta aliyuvanum mole padarthangal venduruguvanulla devas desathil varavu kaathirundum baddapaduthiyum konde ningal etra vishuddha jeevanum bhaktiyum ullavar aayirikkanam so that means you know we have a, 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 a responsibility what to do and this is going to happen for the earth the present earth is going to be destroyed okay and what kind of people we are today you are to live in holy and godliness so let us as we are concluding this class today let us take a take a decision that oh lord help me oh god strengthen me oh god to lead a holy life in my life oh lord and also in in godliness as you look forward to the day of god which will happen quickly we do not know when the second coming of jesus christ is going to happen but we have an expectation that even if all the things of this world all the things of this earth all the structures and all the buildings of this earth I mean all the works of the people of this earth be destroyed we will not be destroyed we will be with jesus forever and ever that is our expectation and we are expecting a new earth a new heaven and we will be there with god with jesus forever and ever so that's what we are expecting in the presence of god so let us all i mean uh, commit us with the mighty hand of god and let us pray that oh lord help us a oh god i mean help us to continue in the spirit of oh lord help us to continue in that holiness of oh god help us to continue in the godliness of oh god many attempts there are many things which may i mean hinder us into i mean i mean getting into the into the heaven but bible very clearly says that when it is waiting for you the second coming of jesus is waiting for you and uh, the the new heaven new earth is waiting for you you will be there one day at the same time i mean how much you are thinking about your personal life your personal life how much you are i mean uh, uh, giving yourself and how much you are submitting your life in the hands of god according to that only you are going to enter into heaven i mean like uh, i mean someone said here that i mean it is god who decide to take one person to heaven or hell but at the same time we have a responsibility we have a, an opportunity god has given the opportunity to to clear ourselves and to and to i mean lead into into a holy life and also when I mean, god has given the opportunity to listen the word of god and to make us when I mean, washed and i mean cleansed by the blood of jesus christ and becoming the saints of god becoming the children of god so that let us all commit ourselves with the mighty hand of god this evening as we were listening about the new earth and the new heaven I mean, we believe that even though everything which is on this earth destroyed when we believe that there is a city there is a city i mean which is a new city coming up and that is for the god's people that is for the god's people so let us wait for that and let us submit us with the mighty hand of god and let's pray for all these people those who are attending in this prayer meeting and also let us pray for all those who are going to attend uh, uh, maybe uh, going to listen the word of god in the coming days also through uh, the youtube or facebook or something let's pray for them also and uh, especially we want to thank god for uh, dear nancy and john uh, they have received their a uh, green card so we have been praying for uh, i mean many of our families for the visa issues and the green card and everything so we have to thank god that uh, dear john and nancy they received their green card amen thank god and also let us pray for that family also in the coming days so that god will bless them also in the coming days so let's pray for them also and uh, uh, as we are gathering together and as we are praying together i request uh, our dear sister emmy george to uh, lead us in prayer now